If you're new to Football Manager or you just want a little boost, I've got 11 tips. I don't have 11 fingers. 11 tips to give you here on how to improve your Football Manager experience. The good news is these will work even if you're on PC or on console. So I've just started a new game here. Obviously, this is the PC version, but like I said, all of this should work on the console. And we're going to start off with tip number one, which is to delegate. In Football Manager, there are a lot of tasks that you could do. You can do the training. You can handle all kinds of things around the data hub. You can do transfers. You can manage your under 21s and under 18s and B teams and all sorts. You have staff, delegate to them. When you first start the game, it's gonna be overwhelming, all these things. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come into your staff screen and you're gonna to go to your responsibilities and then you're gonna go down each of these responsibilities, actually the board one you can't do, but these other ones, delegate the ones which you're not sure about, which you haven't learned yet. You can always come back and take back control of them when you like. So let's say you don't wanna handle the staff side of things for now, you can delegate all of that. Perhaps on set pieces, you want the assistant manager or maybe you've got a set piece coach to handle that, you can delegate that. Perhaps you don't want to do press conferences just yet. Again, delegate them away. Training is a big one. Lots and lots of people just delegate the training so they don't have to worry about it. They don't have to deal with it. If you want to go in and adjust things, you can still go in and adjust things in the training so you can add things in. And it's going to say, do you want to add this just the once or do you want to take control? You can just say just this once. So you can adjust things as well, even if you have delegated it out. So you still have overarching control even when you delegate. You are the manager after all. So just go in. Delegate as, as much as possible and think about it later when you learn the stuff undelegated. For number two, I'm going to come here to the tactics screen and it is to not overcomplicate things. Sometimes you'll see people thinking, right, I'm going to need some kind of crazy formation. Let's get one set up here. I've, I've, got, I've got, I need inverted fullback over here and then maybe this needs to be a, a roaming playmaker and then perhaps also oh, a carry yellow. And then we're going to stick a player in the middle here and it's going to be asymmetric and he's going to be a uh, trick or teaster alongside a non -gange. And then once you've done that, then you come in and you edit their instructions, you give him 10 different instructions instructions all different things don't have to do this keep it simple to start with for the most part you're gonna be fine you can probably choose one of the presets let's say we go with a 433 it doesn't work try something else keep it simple don't overcomplicate things you don't have to worry about every little change you can you know ease your way into it it's not going to work immediately no matter what you try so just ease your way into it don't overthink the tactics you know normally a pretty simple thing to do is to have a couple of players in sort of supporting roles that are going to get the ball forwards a couple of players in attacking roles who are going to get the ball in the back of the net and a couple of players in sort of defensive roles you've got you've got dm here in mind a ball in the field and a couple of defenders as well so just keep it simple a preset works fine you don't have to go in and alter all this stuff and change it to crazy things and add hundreds of instructions that are literally just going to confuse your players and make it very difficult to diagnose when you have a problem the third thing and and I'm going to come here to the club vision screen, but it might be is it part of the club vision something you have with the board. It might be something also that you have with your players that you don't want in the interaction with your players that you don't necessarily want to over promise. If you over promise things to your players and to the board, it's going to come back and bite you. You will find if you over promise to the board, you're going to get sacked. So if you say, oh, I can win the league, just it will get you more money to start the season with, but it's going to be much tougher to to achieve. So be careful not to over promise. Good example, last year I was having at Waterloo, but I got them all the way to the Premier League. I got them to 10th place in the Premier League. The following season, I said, yeah, I can do that again. I can get you to 10th place, maybe even Europe. And we were much lower in the league. Even though I'd got them to the Premier League, they still sacked me because I underperformed on that season's promises. So you're looking things around the board culture here. For example, I'm at Ajax here. They don't have very many, but other clubs will have uh, a lot more. And if you add lots of them, there are lots of things that you are then going to have to uh, meet in order to keep the board and the supporters happy. My fourth tip, and this applies very much during matches, but it can also apply between matches small changes even if you've spotted a problem you can come in here and you say maybe your defensive line is too high you don't have to drag it all the way to the bottom here to much lower just one small tweak just drop it down to standard see how that fits because it's going to fit with your tactics still maybe the passing is more direct maybe you can take it down one notch you don't have to go completely crazy and knock it all the way up and then switch the tempo and then change everything else small changes small tweaks are often the key to success if there's something going wrong tweak it slightly See how that plays out. Still doesn't work. Tweak it again. You just got to take your time on it 
and, and, and just slowly move it to something that's working. If it's really not working, of course, you can try something different, but small changes is always better. My fifth tip goes in perfectly with that fourth tip, and that is patience. You set up a new tactic, it is not gonna work, or probably not gonna work straight away. If you've got one that works straight away, fantastic, but the chances are it's not gonna work straight away. Look at your tactic screen, and you'll see at the top here, there's a thing called tactical familiarity. And until your players are familiar in playing in that tactic, and this can change when you bring in new players as well. So you might get full tactical familiarity, but if you have a large overhaul of players, that familiarity is gonna drop. You've gotta get those players familiar with playing that tactic again. You can adjust this in the training on both versions. Obviously you have a little more control over that on the PC version, but you can adjust that so that they can get to that familiarity quicker. Playing in lots of matches, friendlies, things like that can help as well. But you just gotta be patient. Your tactic might not work the first few times you play it, if it's been 10 games and you haven't had a win with the tactic, maybe it's time to try something different. But one game or two games is not enough to judge a tactic on. You know, imagine you've got different styles of opposition as well. If you have two games, you lost them both, but they were both against the best teams in the league and you're a team that's facing relegation. So that's just going to happen. That's football. You just got to wait it out and then wait to see how your team does against those worst teams. My sixth suggestion is to negotiate everything. Your wage budget and your transfer budget are very, very tight. And you know, how much have I got here? I've got 30 million. If I go to spend, let's 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 adjust this. I'm gonna offer 10 million. They've come back to me with an offer that's actually around 20 million. But you know, we can change this. Let's negotiate. Let's adjust things down. Sometimes, and I'm very guilty of this, I fly on through and I just try to get the deal done. You gotta be careful. There is a, uh, with clubs, it's not too bad. They, you eventually they will just say, submit your best offer and you could, they can reject it and you can go back again with another offer. In the contracts, obviously, when you're dealing with the player directly, it's a bit more, you have the patience of the player that you have to worry about because they could leave the negotiation. But I'm gonna, you know, for example, I'm gonna lower this down. Let's see if we can get them down to around this much. And they've added on additional fees and you can add them on as well. Let's say you think that maybe this is the, the fee that you wanna add. Maybe you think he's probably not gonna score 10 goals. So after 10 goals, we get Give them an extra million but i don't want to give them the league appearances one you can negotiate that they accepted that and that's probably taken about 1.5 million off of the actual overall cost that this this player would cost me so the value is now around 17,250. it was 25 million that they were asking me for originally so make sure you negotiate every little thing that you do with the other clubs and with the other players as well so obviously now if i finally this finalize this offer eventually we will get to the point where we are now in negotiations with him so look we can negotiate star player if you over promise this is the over promising one i was on about earlier if you over promise he's going to expect to play that so let's go regular starter suggest that he's not happy about it important player okay he this is the patience thing he actually ran out of patience with me suggesting that he's an important player it's likely that he will reopen the negotiations he's probably not a star player but it's something to bear in mind. You've got to find that middle ground, negotiate around their patience, which you can see up in the corner here, and the promises that you can make. If, if I promised him star player, but I never play him as star player, I'm just pushing a problem down the line for my club. The seventh thing I suggest you do is don't just look at the player's attributes. You can see all the attributes here. Also look at their traits. Their traits are very important. So we have here, for example, runs with ball through center on Fernandez and gets into opposition area. If I've got him set as a ball winning midfielder, I might not want him to bomb forward and get into the opposition area. Or I might want him to, you know, to move wide with the ball. I might want to try and play him as a Med Salah. And that's not going to work if he has these player traits. So make, if I'm looking for a Med Salah, Jetson Fernandez is not the player that I'm looking for if he's going to stay in the center. These traits can conflict with the roles that you give these players. So think about not just the attributes and whether they fit the roles, also the player traits. You've got ones that might be negative, for example. Here you go on Joseph Sotalo, and it's going to depend how good a player he is. But here, he looks to pass or dribble against pressure in a defensive position rather than going safety first. Well, if he's not very good at passing and his passing is 13 and vision 11, it's not great. If his decision making is low, it's 14, it's okay. Composure is 16, so he is composed. So he probably would be all right. But, you know, other defenders, if you've got that trait on a different defender, that could be a problem. Try his long range passes. Well, perhaps you want to be playing it out the back. He's not the defender for you if you've got a team where you're playing it out the back. So definitely pay attention to your traits. Make sure you're looking at them when you're setting up your player roles and what players you want to bring in and maybe what players don't fit the system that you want to play. Finances, keep your finances in check. Uh, they can become a problem very, very quickly. And this year, for Sports Interactive have in introduced a negative transfer budget. I've got one over in my stream save, which we're doing with KSK Heist in Belgium. They've given me a minus one million 
uh, transfer budget. Actually, we're in positive balance, so I don't know why they're giving it to me, but they give me a negative transfer budget. I can't sign anyone. I can't even sign free transfers because they have to pay the signing on fee, and I haven't got the money to pay the signing on fee even. So I'm in big trouble there. I've got to sort it out. Pay attention to your finances. They can also get you sacked if they're really bad because one, you're not going to be able to bring the players in, but also work within wage budget required. Most clubs have a strict financial thing. Financial fair play can come in. You can end up with points deductions and all sorts. Finances are really, really important. Now, make sure you're not, you know, look when you're ad ad looking at those contracts, be careful what additional add-ons you're adding. Make sure you're making the most out of player sales. Don't be afraid to sell players if it balances the books. Finances are really important. You've got to keep an eye on them. You can see down here, financial fair play, particularly if you're in Europe, you got to make sure that you're staying financially balanced. Obviously, at the end of the year, you get a big amount of money normally for TV rights and prize money and everything. So your money will go down across the season, jump up at the end. Getting into Europe is great for money as well. You get relegated, though. That's a big drop in your revenue that you've got to think about. Well, let's say you are tight on those finances. Now we've got to think about how do we get some players in? Perhaps you haven't got much of a transfer budget. There are two things you can think about. The first one I'm going to say, free transfers. You can get free transfers. If, if you come to your scouting and you can go here and you can, in that quick search there, you can look for contract expired players. And you could see, for example, we could bring in David De Gea to Ajax. So he'd actually be a pretty good signing, bearing in mind what I'm going to show you in a minute. We could bring in Lucas Bilia, for example, on a free transfer. Maybe his physicals aren't there. Now, bear in mind, you know, at this point here, most of these players probably aren't great. Jesse Lingard is a pretty good free transfer that you can pick in for a lot of teams. You know, anyone outside Europa League or down is probably going to benefit from Jesse Lingard. There are loads of players that you could get in on free transfers. If you're not sure about them, maybe you're playing with attribute masking. What you can do is you can offer them a trial. You right click on them or you click on them in, in the console. You right click, you offer a trial. You say how long you want the trial. If, you, if you're a smaller team, you might want this a little bit longer, maybe two or three weeks so you can see their full attributes. Otherwise, you're not going to get to see their full attributes if you have attribute masking on. I don't have it on right now, but you can use this to find some great players, not in the first season when you start the game, but when you get to January the 1st, go look at free transfers from other countries because that's when you can start signing them. You can start offering them contracts for them to arrive in the summer. Make sure also all your players are signed up to new contracts before January the 1st if you want to keep them and their contract was expiring at the end of the year. You're also going to find some countries actually release their players at the start of January. So Brazil, for example, go look at what Brazilians are available on January the 1st or around the start of January because you're going to find some Brazilians um, and you might find some great wonder kids that come into your team. Depending on what level you're at, you know, obviously they're, they're not going to be the best Brazilians. You're not going to find a Neymar in there, but you can definitely find some good players around January the 1st. Now, let's say your money is even tighter than that and you can't even afford the free transfers because you haven't even got any wage budget well your answer is going to have to be loans you can get in loans it's going to depend on what league you're in as to what rules so first thing you do you're going to change this tick button from the interested in transfer to interested in loan you can change it to doubtful by the way so you get a few more players who might be interested and change the search to loan listed you can also change it here in the status loan listed and these are all the players that are available for loan. I often sort this by transfer value so I can see the highest valued player players at the top who are, might be interested in going. So Brahim Diaz actually would probably be pretty good for, for Ajax if I could make an offer on him on a loan offer. Actually, I could buy him as well. And they're going to say how much they want. Now, a really good player, uh, over 21-ish, they might want a lot of money here. You can perhaps uh, negotiate this, particularly if you have an optional fee, if you add a high optional or mandatory future fee. Uh, mandatory means you will actually buy them in the future. I would have to pay quite a lot of his wages, but I'm not paying all of his wages. Maybe I would want to try and get rid of these monthly fees. You can inter you can interact with them. Uh, you can negotiate this, and it's much easier to negotiate in this year's game than it has been in previous games. So if this is something you've tried in previous year's games and you found they're completely immovable, that's not the case this year. They will negotiate these things. Um, so for example, if I lock both of these and lock the optional fee, but drop this down to 100K and this down to 250, suggest it, and they might negotiate. Let's see if we can even just get a small discount. I, I lied, they're not negotiating at all. No, they did negotiate, there you go. So we got it slightly lower, not loads lower, but slightly lower. So we managed to get them down a little bit on Brahim Diaz. You can get loads of them in. Um, you will find some in here, and if we go, maybe he's used for Makoko, perhaps probably not because he's quite a good player. You will find some particularly younger players that you could get for free. I mean, you can also go to teams if you know there are teams. If I go to Man City, for example, I might find at Man City that there are players in their under 21s who they have loan listed, who they're willing to give away for free. So let's have a look at Mika Hamilton, for example, loan listed. They don't want very much for him. You will find if you go have an affiliate, for example, you might find some of your affiliates will have these free players. Let's have a look at Ben Knight. They want a little bit of money for him. 
and it's going to depend on what your club as well. I'm not sure if Ajax is going to is going to mean that they're going to want more money for him. Um, but yeah, certainly you can find players for free. As you get closer to deadline day, and particularly on deadline day, teams are much more willing to offer those players to you for free if they've not yet secured them alone. So that's something to bear in mind. The best loans you're obviously going to want to try and get at the start, but you're still going to find some at the end of the window who aren't going to cost you anything. You can bring in as money as possible. You can just go to clubs. You can go, I did this in my save. I went to Borussia Dortmund, just offered loads of loans for all their B team players, see, saw which ones came in and decided from there which ones I liked and which ones weren't good enough. So loans is, it's not a long-term strategy, but it's a good way financially of getting players into your team. Check your league rules. You might not be able to play so many loan players. So you're still going to need some regular players in your team. But it really helped me last year at Palermo. I went into Palermo and I had to get my wage budget from 140K down to 40K. I had no transfer budget. 40K only covered three players on my first team. I filled the rest of the team out with loans got them promoted still. My final tip and the reason why I perhaps was looking at David De Gea at the start is you need a backup keeper for sure in Football Manager this year. They have patched it so keeper injuries aren't quite so bad but I have been caught out so many times over the years by my main keeper getting injured. Actually right now in my high save I've just sold my goalkeeper. I don't have a backup keeper. I'm in big trouble. The match season's about to start and I need to get a backup keeper in, in quick. I've got a loan offer that's out there, but it hasn't come through. So I'm probably going to be playing a youth player for the first game. He's going to be conceding goals. I'm in trouble. Make sure you have a backup keeper. Ajax, I've chosen Ajax for this particular reason, because you can see we did an Ajax rebuild. I didn't notice. Both of their keepers are out four to five months on one and six to eight months on the other. Now they have got a third keeper, fortunately, which is Jay Gorty. He's quite good. He's probably good enough just about for, for at least to cover those two in the meantime. But you will find sometimes you might think I don't need a backup keeper. You need a backup keeper. It's going to catch you out otherwise. Maybe get a young keeper in someone that you can you know, train up, worry about later on. You can pick them up cheap, you pay them low wages. If, if they've got a lot of potential, it might be the way to go about it. You just have to remember other positions, you can shift your formation, you can play players out of position. Goalkeepers, they're one of a kind. So those were 11 tips to help you get started on your football manager journey. Hopefully that helped. Let me know if it did down in the comments below. If there's anything else you want me to look at in Football Manager, you want a bit more detail on, let me know in the comments down below as well. If you want to build the best team in Football Manager, I also have a video on how to find the best wonder kids in Football Manager. Except for the console version, everything in this video also works for the PC version. So it doesn't matter which version you are on and you can go find yourself some great wonder kids. I'm not telling you who they are. I'm telling you how to find them in your game.